so professor uh, yeah. in your coursera specialization you talk about the impact that marketing has in in some in, in uh, a wide uh, quantity of industries but for example uh, you 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 used to talk about entertainment sports yeah. Yeah. hospitality yeah. and what do you think uh, in general which are the main differences uh, you see between how those uh, industries that are service centric are promoted in asia versus mm. in in western hemisphere for example oh great question great question and uh because uh, that, that module on service marketing, uh, it's taught by actually a colleague of mine. Uh, but my thinking about service marketing has always been uh, that, um, and this is where the concept of nunnopi, for those of you who haven't taken my Coursera courses, nunnopi means uh, the eye level of the consumer. Mm -hmm. So uh, the philosophy that I always preach about how to succeed in um, not only uh, marketing, but even filmmaking is to understand the eye level. So it could be uh, physical, the eye level, uh, but, but normally when I say eye level, I'm talking about the expectations or the uh, perspective that a consumer uh, has. So answering your question, uh, service companies from abroad uh, have often failed in, in Asia, especially in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason for that is because of Nunnopi, because the expectation level, and this actually ties in very well with the logistics that I mm -hmm. talked about before. So just to give you an example, uh, there's, uh, I, I don't get paid by them, so I, I can mention them. So um, this is just my opinion, but there's a brand called Market Curly. And okay. it's like um, Amazon. It's not number one in Korea, but it is a um, online delivery company. And uh, they have, targeted especially women women okay. of all ages but especially women in their 20s 30s uh who are very busy uh and uh, so what they do which is incredible which is mind-boggling is at no additional cost so this has been their point of difference this is how they have differentiated themselves as a latecomer Mm -hmm. And it helps uh, that the CEO, the founder of this company herself, it's a woman okay. who can see eye to eye. And it's a young uh, woman. So it started as a, a startup. I think she was like 30, early 30s. And just in like four or five years, it's grown to be one of the top, it's, I think maybe the third or fourth largest online uh, e-commerce uh, company in Korea. Uh, they deliver, uh, and we did this. I mean, uh, just uh, two days back, I wanted to make a Greek watermelon salad. <laughs> so, so I was asking my wife, but we don't have any pita bread. So she said, okay. um, uh, pita bread, I'm sure many of you know, are sure, like sure. Uh, tortillas in, uh, in, in Mexico. So, uh, so so uh, coupon, I looked it up, said we can deliver the, uh, the tortilla, no, excuse me, the, the pita bread mm -hmm. the next morning. And we, this was like 10 p.m. Wow. So we put in the order and it's waiting for us when we get up at 7 a.m. Wow. Think about this. And we didn't have to order that much. So, so the, the minimum, uh or ordering side wasn't that much so so this is uh, the nunnopi of koreans so yes and they're used to this uh you go to a bank uh they expect not to wait any more than five minutes at a bank incredible <laughs> uh, to give you a comparison 
I mentioned Singapore. And in Singapore, I, I apologize to any Singaporeans watching this. Uh, you're a great friend of mine. I love Singapore. But I hate the fact that in Singapore, um, you have to wait often an hour to get service if you don't have an appointment. In Korea, you don't need an appointment. You can just walk in and bang, within five minutes, someone will serve you. So uh, if, I, if I can cut to the chase, in Korea, the nunapi is so, so high. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's related to service. It's because of the infrastructure of delivery systems. Sure. Uh, and it's also related to the internal infrastructure of how people are trained within uh, a bank, other financial institutions, mm -hmm. where if there's a bottleneck, well, then the managers, they will come and serve. So there, there's no, yeah. it's not as if the managers will always say, oh, I'm just a manager. No, it's like yeah. Tony Fernandez of uh, Air Asia. And uh, there's a famous example of him. He's the CEO, the founder uh, of him going down to the um, uh, uh, terminal and working as the, the baggage handler. Okay. The CEO, yeah. he's doing that. Uh, and it's not just a show. It's not just for uh, uh, photo ops. I put in my so, so the executive will come down and help because uh, the thing about service is that people have to do it. Absolutely. So, so a key key word that I use in my Coursera course is flexibility. The so good companies, uh, they, they, they have to be uh, flexible, especially nowadays because of the uh, pandemic. Because a lot of the old rules about how to do things they they went out the window. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So so now you have to be very nimble and adjust to the new reality of how mm -hmm. to serve customers not only offline but online. And if you need people, again, uh, you can outsource them. But the problem with outsourcing is that it takes time, and there's no control or less control. So yeah. internally, this is why you really have to uh, be very resilient, re resourceful. These are other terms that have cropped up because of the uh, pandemic, resourcefulness, re uh, resiliency. Uh, but I think they all relate to flexibility. Uh, companies can't Absolutely. be rigid, especially uh, these days. Yes. Uh, given the, all the new kinds of constraints that companies face. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a kind of egalitarian approach yeah. that maybe is more common in European countries, but, mm. but it's something that in in one way or another, we need to adapt for yeah. organizations to be sure yeah. that we have that kind of impact that you mentioned. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And Give us a like about this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again and see you soon.